bright red shirt today. Number one, I wanted to be coordinated with the pyramids up here so that I would sort of blend in. And the other reason, of course, is that because today is Pentecost. It's the official birthday of the church. So if you will, please open your hymnals to number 539 and let's uh, sing the first and last verses of O Spirit of the Living God. <clears throat> Again, we'll do the first and the last first.
one more. 145. 145. We have an echo. morning. What a great day. Obviously I'm not Jan. She's away for the weekend. So I was chosen to uh, bring you the announcements this morning. If any of you are here for the first time, we would appreciate it if you would stop by the desk and sign the form with address so that we can come by your house as we can drop a mug off to you. Or as Jan says, you've been mugged. We have, if you'll turn to the ministry, I'm sorry, ministry opportunities and events, we have several announcements. I can't cover them all because Pastor Sarah has this on three-minute time frame. But I'm not under, covered under that at all. The only thing she can do to me is turn the sound off. So, so you, you can keep doing this all you want to. Okay, first thing is we're... Next week's Father's Day, as everybody knows, I'm sure. The, tonight is a very important night because in this little pink slip here, Dan Knight and his crew is here. There's a dinner that goes along with this. It's, uh, if you've never heard Dan Knight, you really ought to because he is fantastic. Tickets are still on sale in the office. Janet will handle that. On the back is your disaster relief. We're going to put together teams as we know uh, what to do, and Ed Jenner is responsible for that. And then I was, as I was walking in this morning, I gave a, I handed another piece of paper. Those of you that in every member of ministry that are scheduled to be ushers, uh, lay readers, coffee, or anything during this next uh, time period, July through December, there's a packet outside with your name on it. It's alphabetical. It's in the narthex. If you'll pick it up, we appreciate it, because we don't, we don't want you to say we don't know we were supposed to do that, which happens some. Okay, now to the printed information. Next week is a card shower and a potluck to honor Pastor Sarah as she heads out into the world of retirement. Oh, like I said in the first service, Methodist ministers do not retire they keep getting called back and back and back. We wish her luck. Next, next weekend we'll have the uh, a covered dish at noon. There's a lot of information here. Pakistan is next Sunday on June the 19th. United Methodist Women will hold their quarterly luncheon on June 22nd at noon. The Contemporary Praise Band, fun, uh, band will host an all-church potluck and gospel sing on Sunday, June 26th at 5.30 to honor both the new pastor and uh, Pastor Lee Mine. Meals on Wheels distribution is ours during the month of July. I think that's all the time I have to read anything like this. Thank you.
in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I say good morning. Good morning. Now y'all, that's just not good enough. I mean, don't you know that this explosion of voice at this time sets your spirit going for the rest of the service? So, I say, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, good morning. Good morning. Whoa, <laughs> the, sta the stage is set. Now, take that enthusiasm, turn to your neighbor, say, welcome. We're glad you're here. <laughs> As we remain standing, and Rod will lead us, well, maybe and maybe not. You all were just enthusiastic this morning. <laughs> Very good. Too much fun. They are. If you'll join me in reading the uh, Statement of Faith this morning, it's number 883. Either read it from the bulletin or from the hymnal. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God be with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. the joys and concerns, if you will take out 
fill all my notes off. This little sheet of paper, we'll run over these very quickly, and I have a whole bunch that's not on there. We'll start with the ones I don't have on there so I don't forget them. The Mendozas have a new son to go along with uh, Izzy. 11 pounds, 21 ounces uh, length. And John told me earlier that he had to take his car keys away from him twice this week. <laughs> I can see why. In an upper frame of mind also, <clears throat> there was a golf team in the uh, tournament this weekend. Mac McCain, Bill Dannenhauer, Gary Gross Nickel, and Bob Billingsley, and they won their flight. And it was very good. Now, our youth is in Nashville this week on a trip. So when we get to the prayer part and in your prayers this week, be sure and keep them in mind. In celebrations in the bulletin, a donation has been made to Habitat Apostle Build, has been made in honor of Harold and Tibby Fitch's 67th wedding anniversary on June 10th. Congratulations, Harold. Be Tibby's not here, so take our condolences to her. <laughs> and I think we ought to sing the anniversary at least a half of them, don't you? sad news. Those of you that know Charlie Brown, he passed away, I think it was yesterday. He's been ill for quite some time. In the hospital, Arlene Beeks is still in there. Joyce Cox has gone home. Pat Pershing is in Northwest Bentonville. And Stan Carlson's in the hospital. So there's a lot of them that are not on there. That's the only corrections I have to make to that. Now, if you will you need prayer or know of anybody that needs prayer, please complete one of these prayer cards, drop it in the coffering plate or in the prayer boxes outside. And remember all these people that we talked about this morning and everybody we have listed on the reverse side in your prayers this week. Thank you. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer by singing the prayer song. Our Heavenly Father, whose faithfulness spans generations, your grace and mercy continually astound us. Through Jesus, you have entered our world, walked where we walk, shared our frailties and our ailments, been touched by our joys and sorrows. You hear the prayers of all who bow down before you as Jesus intercedes on their behalf. We can utter our pleas with assurance that Jesus will translate into symbols that communicate our love. We plead that you hear our prayers for those unfortunate individuals that are impacted by the recent tornadoes. And this week we ask a special plea that you watch over and bless your obedient servant, Pastor Sarah, as she entered her retirement years. We are thankful that we need hide nothing from you. 
You know our longings, desires, our fears, and temptations. We hear again of how Jesus drew apart to spend time in prayer, his tears testifying the frightening prospect of death. We sense the sorrow he endured and witness his unyielding confessions of trust in your will. Through him, we too can endure. We wait for the day when all hearts shall love you and Jesus shall reign supreme. In the meantime, we shall continue to call on your guidance, for we know not what each day will bring. We shall wake up with the assurance that dawn brings resurrection and confront each moment as a time of grace. When the sun sets and our ministry is over, we pray that our efforts will be found worthy of your mercy and grace. And as we prepare for the Lord's Prayer, why don't we hold hands with your neighbor or with each other or yourself. <coughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Let us stand as we sing together.
Please be seated. Good morning. I'm reading from John 14, 15 to 20. Listen for the word of God. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you in a little while. The world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Dear God, for all you do for us, for all that you have this day when we celebrate Pentecost, the time of your Holy Spirit being a gift to come, to be in. Open us. Just open us, gracious God, that we may hear your word, and in hearing, believe, and in believe, knowing, and in knowing, feel your presence. Be with us, in Christ's name, amen, and amen. Our scripture this morning is really a prequel to... Pentecost. Now, you all know what a prequel is. You know, we've had Star Wars, we've had all these other things that have been in sequence. You know, there have been a sequel, like 
uh, Rocky One, Rocky Two, Rocky Three. And especially in Star Wars, they started going back and they started saying, well, we've run out of room over here. Let's go ahead and, and tell the story of how this started. That's a prequel. We're in a prequel this morning, a prequel to Pentecost. This is the announcement that Jesus has about what's going to happen, how we're going to be held by the Holy Spirit, how we're going to be held. So let's set the stage. Let's just set it. Now we know this part of John was given the night of the Last Supper. Now when we say Last Supper, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Da Vinci's painting, isn't it? We see Christ in the center, and we see the disciples out beside him sitting at a table. Well, we know there were not tables there <laughs> at that time. In fact, what we do know historically now is that Jesus, the Last Supper, was in a home of a very wealthy person. And so they would have set Roman style in a horseshoe, on pillows. And usually what this did was that they leaned on their left elbow so they could eat with their right hand. We know that John was on the right, and whether you believe that in Dan Brown's book, The Da Vinci Code, whether John was actually Joanne or Mary, <laughs> John was there. And we also know that Judas was on his left. Because when it says, the person that takes this cup, the person that takes this morsel of bread, will be the one to betray me. Now, I'm sure Jesus didn't throw the piece of bread across the room. No, he would have given it to the person next to him. Judas was there by his side. Now, who else was there? You know, just because we only hear the words of the 12 disciples doesn't mean that there weren't other people present. Who cooked? That's what I always thought. Who prepared the meal? Well, I know that Jesus, even though he was the greatest women's liber of the time, I can't see Jesus and the 12 disciples going into the kitchen in the daytime to grind up the meal, to make the un unleavened loaf, to fix the bitter herbs, to put out the plates and the cups. I don't think so. There had to have been women there. Probably Martha and Mary. We know, too, or we could surmise that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there. Now, we know that Mary was there during the crucifixion. The Passover meal was one of the biggest family meals of the year. Now, do you think he would not have invited his mother to this meal? I don't think so. So just because we see this part doesn't mean there weren't other people there. And being other people there, this opens up the story to us being there. How do we hear this? What's important in this to you? We know that from psychologists and uh, communication experts that how we hear, what we hear, depends on our age, where we are in life, our relationships, our fears, whether we're in the middle of something that, that we have done or we've gotten in the way of something somebody else has done, or whether we're just in disasters, like a tornado. What do you hear in this story? What do you hear in this happening. Now, we know it happened because it's in all four Gospels. What do you hear? 
And Jesus said, I will not leave you orphaned. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world may see me no more, but you will see me. And then becomes the most important passage to me, to me, in Scripture. For it says, on that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. You see, this takes us so much further than, oh, well, we'll hear about God. Yes, of course we will. We'll hear about the wonderful works. We have the knowledge of the laws. Oh, and that's good, very good to live by. But you see, this takes it much, much further. Christ is at one with the Father. And then it goes further. Not only is he at one with the Father, but he says, Christ says, I'm in you. You can be at one with me. I am in you and you are in me. This is the presence and the promise of the Holy Scripture. When I was at a spiritual retreat um, several years ago down at Subiaco, it's a monastery here in Arkansas. And at Subiaco, they at that time were raising their own hogs. Well, I'd gotten up early one morning to, to go for a walk, and I went down to the hog barn. And when I walked in there, it was the most beautiful feeling of being at one. There was a mother pig there, and she had just had several little piglets, and they were all nestled just right there, just right there with her. And I really did feel a part of that creation. And when the monks came in later to feed them, they said, we've never seen the animals connect with somebody like that. Well, I told my daughter about this, and when I told her about it, she says, oh, mother, please don't tell people you are at one with the pigs. <laughs> but that's the way I felt. I will not leave you orphaned. I will not leave you orphaned. Those words were so meaningful to an 11-year-old girl who had just found out that her father was dying of cancer. We got the call on Saturday. My um, mother and father were separated, and Daddy was still living in Dallas, and we were living in Bentonville. And we got the call on Saturday that Daddy was dying. Now, of course, remember back that time, they didn't tell the person who was dying that they were dying. They thought they would shield that from them as if they didn't know. But when we got this call, all I could think of, I just want to be in the church. I just want to go to church and be there. Well, I walked to the church. And of course, remember, this was back in the time when churches were not locked. And I walked back home. And this was also back in the time when parents weren't afraid to let an 11-year-old girl walk to church two miles away and walk back home unaccompanied because it was safe. Now, I may have told you all that when I grew up in Bentonville, we had a romping population of 4,014. And we had one stoplight, and it was out on Highway 71 and Main, right there. 
And the stoplight would go in and out, depended on who fussed the most that month. And my grandmother was usually at the head of this caucus because it all depended on whether she got stopped by the light when she didn't want to get stopped or not. But one time, they put a stoplight around the square, on the square. Well, needless to say, there was so much confusion that it did not stay very long. But while it was there, our good friend Tommy Harrison took his driver's test. And, you know, this was when driver's test, you really had to drive, and you had to parallel park, and you had to do all these things. Well, Tommy was taking his driver's test and having to go around the square and came to the stoplight. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Tommy was colorblind. <laughs> and whether he couldn't remember or just didn't know, he didn't know which was the red light and which was the green light. You can guess what happened. He ran a red light in the middle of his driving test. You think he got his license that day? The thing of it is, is that Tommy was just confused or didn't know. Believe it or not, that brings us back to our scripture. Because from the next part of scripture, it talks about Judas just not knowing, confused as to the presence of God. Listen to this when it takes up in 21 of the scripture. Verse 21, and Jesus says, They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. See, God loves all of us all the time, but unless we love God, we cannot open up ourselves to that presence. And then Judas, right here, is the master of not knowing or being confused. Because he says, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not the world? Totally confused. Just didn't get it. Why Christ was there. And then Jesus answers him. Those who love me will keep my word and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Make our home with them. The presence of God indwelling in you when you love God. You know, when I think of Judas, I think of a person that lives out of his own mind, who, a person who lives his own beliefs, not God's. In fact, he reminds me of this quote that I read in a book called Joshua, and this reminds you of people today. So many people with harried looks on their faces seemingly by, beset by so many heavy burdens. Does this not talk about so many people today? But the thing to remember, you are a masterpiece of God. You were created by God specifically for your place in this world. Every single one of you. You know, there seem to be so many events in our lives that bring us to where we are. But unless we know God, we can't connect these dots of these seemingly unrelated experiences. 
for us to know why we are here. Because you see, God made you and put you together with these experiences so that by your workings, you will preach. Your life will preach. Preach what? Does your life preach God's kingdom or something else? When one of my favorite stories that really talks about this presence of God being with us. Now, I've told it before, but being as I'm going to be retired in a week, I'll tell my favorite story again. And this, after all, is Bella Vista. So you may not remember it anyway. <laughs> but it's a story, it's not really, it's really happening by Jim Brooks, who is a, a dear pastor, friend of mine. And this happened when he was a little boy. And they lived on a farm. And one Sunday afternoon, they had cousins come to visit. Well, this is before telephones out in the country. And so his mama said, Jimmy, run over there and get your daddy. His daddy was there in a, a, a farm right next to theirs. And he says, you have to do it hurriedly. It's the only place he could get over there quickly was to go through this little forest. And the sun was casting shadows. You remember shadows when you were growing up? And the trees were monsters blowing. And the bushes were gargoyles with their eyes, with their eyes popping open and closed, depending on where the shadows were. And the tall grass, oh my gosh, that tall grass, it was waving fingers that were going to come and touch you, maybe grab you. Well, he got all the way through that, scared to death. And so they, but they had to go back through this force to get home quickly. But this time it was very different. Because he was holding his father's hand. And the trees, they were trees. The bushes, well, they were just bushes. And the waving grass was just beautiful waving grass. Why? Because he was holding his father's hand. How do we hold our father's hand? How do we do this? Every morning when you get up to start the day, say, Father, I give you this day. Be my wisdom in this day. In every decision that you make, say, God, be in this decision. Be my wisdom in this decision. Every relationship you have, God, be in this relationship. Be my wisdom. In other words, every day, every hour, practice. Practice this presence. And all you have to do is hold your hand. And God said, I will not leave you orphaned. In a little while, the world may see me no more, but you will see me. For in that day, you will know, you will know that I am in my Father and you are in me, and I am in you. We are here in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen. Let us stand, and we are singing a different song that is in your bulletin.
we are singing Seek Ye First, which is number, I wrote it down and then I put it back. Four, what is it, 405? 405. So let us please stand as we sing together. 405. Seek ye first. As we're sitting down with the ushers, please come forward. To know at this time that you have a delight and a gift, for you can give a gift. A gift that continues ministry, a gift that keeps this wonderful, somewhat rocky, but always marvelous church functioning. And let's not forget the extra dollar for the mission.
O God, most merciful and gracious, of whose bounty we have all received, please accept this offering to advance your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Do you all know where the red light is? Do you know where the green light is? Or do you get confused? Or sometimes just forget? Remember that God is always there. All you have to do is what? Hold out your hand. Hold out your hand. We are here in the name of the one who holds us and redeems us. In Christ's name, amen and amen.